All right, so now let's look at an example of how we use the empirical rule. So IQ scores are roughly bell-shaped. They have a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Use this information to construct an empirical rule curve and then answer the questions below. So we have a few key pieces of information here that I'm going to highlight. We have that they are roughly bell-shaped. That's really good. That means we can use the empirical rule. We have a mean of 100 and we have a standard deviation of 15. So for this problem, I'm gonna switch this to black real quick. Our mu equals 100 and our sigma is equal to 15. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to fill in this empirical rule curve. I'm going to find the numerical values on the bottom for the mean and then each value away from the mean and then I'm also going to fill in all of the percentages. So the first value I'm going to mark on here is the mean, which goes in the middle. So the mean is 100. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the value for one standard deviation below the mean. So if I have an IQ score that is one standard deviation below the mean, what is my IQ score? So to find that, I'm going to take my mean of 100 and I'm going to subtract 15, which means I would have an IQ of 85 if I am one standard deviation below the mean. And then two standard deviations below the mean. What would that IQ score be? Well, now I'm looking at 100 minus two standard deviations, and each standard deviation is 15. So two times 15 is 30, and 100 minus 30 is 70. So if your IQ is 70, you are two standard deviations below the average IQ score of 100. And then we're gonna do this one more time to get three standard deviations below the mean. So I'm gonna take my mean of 100 and I'm gonna subtract three standard deviations. Each standard deviation is 15. So now I get 55. Now I'm gonna repeat this process, but now I'm gonna be looking at the values that are above the mean. So I'm going to be adding the standard deviation each time. So I'm going to start one standard deviation above the mean. If you have an IQ score that is one standard deviation above the mean, then you have an IQ of 115. If your IQ is two standard deviations above the mean, then you have an IQ of 130. And finally, three standard deviations above the mean would mean your IQ is 145. Now notice these values that I've put in here are falling directly on these lines that have been drawn on here. They're not in the middle, they're not in between. Okay, it's directly on this purple line or this blue line or the green, or sorry, pink line that I've drawn. So these are the values that are specific to this problem or this distribution that I'm looking at. These numbers down on the bottom that I filled in first are the only numbers that should differ from problem to problem or data, val or data set to data set. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna fill in all of my percentages. So I know that from one standard deviation above and to two standard or to one standard deviation below, that is 68% of the data. With each section being 34%. Two standard deviations below to two standard deviations above is 95% of the data. 
And then these sections here from two below to one below, this chunk here is 13.5% and up here 13.5%. And then from three below to three above, trying to squeeze this in here, that is 99.7% of the data with 2.35% in each of these sections from two above to three above and two below to three below. And then the last section we have here, don't forget we do have a little bit of data that is beyond three standard deviations away from the mean and it is 0.15% on either side. This is a fully annotated empirical rule for this data set or for this problem. I have all of the standard deviation values and I have all of the percentages for the empirical rule curve. So now that I have filled this all out, I'm going to go ahead and look at the questions that need to be answered. So the first question says 95% of IQ scores are between what two values? So looking here, 95% of the scores fall between the blue line and the blue line. From blue to blue, that's 95% of the data. So 95% of IQ scores are between 70 and 130. Looking from blue line below to blue line above, because that's 95% of the data. What percentage of IQ scores are between 70 and 130? So now I'm looking, this is going, hopefully you can see what the answer is going to be. But here I'm looking for 70, so I'm going to draw an arrow on the blue line for 70, and then 130. So I'm going to draw an arrow on the blue line for 130. So now I can see, okay, I'm going from blue line to blue line. So the blue line to blue line is 95%. Alternatively, I could say, okay, from blue to blue, I'm going to add each of the little sections together to see what that totals. So I'm actually going to write that out if that's what I was doing. So starting at the blue line for 70, we have 13.5% plus from 85 to 100 is 34% plus from 100 to 115, that's 34 percent, and then from 115 to 130, that's 13.5 percent. If we add all of those up, we do in fact get 95 percent. I don't know what just happened. So from 70 to 130, 95 percent of our data is going to fall between those two values. So then what percent of IQ scores are below 70? So now I'm looking at the line for 70. So that's this blue line again. And I want to know what percent of the scores are below that. So I want to look at the 70. And I want to look at all of the percentages below that. And I'm going to add those percentages together. So directly to the left of 70, from 70 to 55, that's 2.35% of the data. And then from 55 onward, that's 0.15% of the data. So that gives me a total of 2.5%. Only 2.5% of the population has an IQ score less than 70. And then our last one, I believe this is our last question, what percent of IQ scores are above 115? So now we're looking at 115, which is this purple line. And we wanna know the percentage above that. So that's all of this information. Well, from 115 to 130, that's 13.5% of the data. So I'm going to write that guy down first. 13.5%. 
Then from 130 to 145, we have 2.35% of the data. So I'm going to add those together. And then from 145 onward, we have 0.15% of the data. So now, if we add these together, we can see that 16% of people have an IQ score of 115 or higher. So not a whole lot of people are scoring above 115, which is only one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, most of the people are scoring between 85 and 115. Only 16% of people are scoring higher than a 115. I personally do not know what my IQ score is, so I don't expect a lot of you do. But that's an example of how we can actually use the empirical rule. Okay, is asking questions like, what percent are between these two values? What percent are above this value? What percent is below this value? Those types of questions. So there's an application of 